<laughs> yeah, <laughs> shit is Damn, you officially did that real. <clears throat> yeah, I couldn't remember how many fingers three was, but it's this many. <laughs> Here I think we in Europe are it's again. this many. Right? Broadcast for the nation. <sighs> don't vote for Joe Biden. I don't think that's a concern. <laughs> I don't, I don't feel like Joe... He's a bygone trend. So I think I back again. Again. the bygone trend is nice. Yeah. That's good. That's good. Bloom, Bloom and, and uh, Byrne, unfortunately. Bloomberg and, uh, well, I don't know, Klobuchar, Klobuchar and be lost tonight. Pete, Pete, Pete Buttigieg. Uh, those guys are the ones that I'm saying. And Biden. He had, you know. Fuck yeah, I don't. All. I don't want any of those. But Warren yeah. or Sanders. Jeez. Yeah, I like those guys. Uh, those two are doing much better. I, I want to ask clarity: Are you guys talking about electability or who you like? Who I like. Okay. Yeah. And so, honestly, do you think? Do you think that Biden and Warren's? I mean, Biden and who is the other person? Well, Klobuchar and Buttigieg, whatever. So I guess is Biden's electability. I have been following nothing. They're, so, they're and not on purpose because I know I'm going to ask you guys. Unelectable. They're, they're unelectable. fumbling idiots. They're yeah. going to get burned by Trump in the debate. I will say but this. Uh, Biden and Bloomberg oh, oh. are worthless jokes. Uh, uh, Klobuchar and uh, Buttigieg, maybe, um, I think they could, they could possibly step in the arena a little bit. Klobuchar, though... She laughs at all of her own one-liner She's jokes. So nervous. Well, yeah, it's, oh, it just that isn't. energy. It's just so cringy it's not, to me. It's, yeah, it's very yeah. cringy. I don't. Buttigieg, I'm not the only I don't like him. Like yeah, and I don't like Pete really. I want to like. See, one of the things I don't like about him is that I want to almost like yeah. him. Yeah. Like every time I see him, I'm yeah. thinking, "Let me give this guy a chance." I know. And then he just <clears throat> he's just a dick. That being said, yep. against Chump, he is a military veteran. <laughs> And he's kind of witty, like like and when he's a uh, dick. it's good. Yeah, exactly. When Trump called him Alfred E. Newman, his response was, "I had to look that up because I wasn't familiar with who that is," which I thought was a pretty good comeback. You know what I mean? Because he's basically saying, "Like, yeah, I don't even." Old, bro. Yeah, Mad Magazine. What the fuck is that? You know, which was pretty funny. Uh, but he's trying to play this little lane of like, well. You know, if you don't want the status quo like Bloomberg and you don't want a revolution like Bernie, then I'm your guy. And it just it, it's not yeah. humble yeah. In, in any way. And it's, it's I, I find him I don't know. disingenuous. I think the thing that is generating um, the desire to go vote is the same aspect that Obama sold so well. And it's his authenticity. And this is I'm saying yeah. this on the part of Bernie Sanders. The yeah. reason he carries through in these states and is doing so well nationally right now, even yeah. in places like Texas, he's doing fantastically down there. Um, he people thought? people. He's exactly the same guy who we saw that time ago, four years ago. Right. You know, he we he has right. not shifted on any policy. He is strident, you know, militant in his views. But we know exactly what that is. And yeah. it represents a big enough swath of what. Uh, people that will benefit from it and they even if it's risky business trying to get some of that legislation through congress you know questionable at best how much of the revolution will actually take place nonetheless having somebody who represents those values they know just furthers that progressive agenda in america and allows you know the people who feel about wanting a modern progressive society to exist in america outnumber those that want it well, to be in you know last century you know lynching folks I also think, you know, we talked about this uh, off the podcast many years ago or a couple of years ago, but it's like my whole life, I've rarely met anyone who was like, we have the best system out there. All yeah, the guys right. that run are awesome. Right. Everybody who wins is even better than awesome. And I'm just proud to say this is the American political system. That's not like says no one ever. You know what I'm right. saying? Right. So it's feasible to me that there would be people who don't normally vote who would say, I want to vote for this guy, Bernie, because he, like you say, he knows what he believes. He's been saying the same stuff for a long time and he doesn't give a fuck. He's not trying to sit here and like when they try to get him on this or that, or, you know, like 
play these little gotcha moves. He he doesn't fall for it. And he's he's like, it seems to me he's the sharpest of the politicians in the yeah. bunch, too. Yeah. Like, he's actually a smooth operator in a certain way that you wouldn't necessarily assume. And uh-huh. maybe in 2016, not as much. And before that, definitely not as much. But it's like, this guy has learned from the battles right. he's been he in has. since he then. Right. Yeah. Well, he like he's also he's always struck me as like not only is that is he the same person year over year, he strikes me as the obviously I've never been in the same room with him, but he strikes me as the Bjorn same has. kind. Of, well, he, he strikes me as the same kind of person on a stage as in a small room in a negotiation. Right, like, that's the point. Is like he yeah, strikes me yeah. that he's going to speak to Elizabeth Warren on stage in a debate exactly the same way that he would speak to her behind closed doors alone exactly. together. Yeah, I think you're. Right? I think generally speaking, you're right. He maybe, might add maybe that's not true. But like I. I can't even imagine that being the case for any other candidates I've seen. Like, no, no, I'm sure they're completely different people when they're not on the stage. Right. In front of the mic. Yeah. Like Pete, you know, I think he's definitely one of those chameleon. Oh, gosh. Yeah. Kind of right. yeah. You uh, know, that dude like smokes a hell of weed when he's home, like shoots the shit with his friend and talks all kinds of shit about people and is super sloppy in all kinds of ways and then buttons the fuck up when he gets on stage. That's what he yeah. strikes me. I, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. But. Bernie, you were at a Bernie rally in Tacoma, rally. Washington. Yeah, well, how exactly. was that? What was that like? Yeah. It was um was it like no, it, was, it, it was really was passionate. That? It was like a rock concert. It was on Monday night. Okay. Um and tw- about 20,000 people were there uh oh. in the Tacoma Dome. It was full right. all the way around um and on the floor. Uh there were four Trump hecklers who oh, were funny. outside um as we were coming in and um I like kind of not really for <laughs> them to awesome. hear was like, oh, hey, losers and liked it, but didn't really like say anything to them or shot them. And I just like, you know, you're like, oh, I wish I had some really the perfect fucking thing to shout right. at them right now. But, you know, you're like, oh, I don't have that. So I'm just going to kind of keep walking. The lady behind <laughs> me, though, had the fucking I thought it was genius. She was like, hey, we'll forgive you. We're super inclusive. You can come join us. <laughs> yeah, it's not too late. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, Bernie that saves. Was, that was righteous. Bernie um, saves. Bernie <laughs> saves. There was a Jesus for Bernie That's there. Right. A guy like, dressed like Jesus who was down on the main floor. I heard that the was the real pumped. Jesus, actually. It is. It was Jesus. Yeah. 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 Uh, he came back. He was like, just uh, for Bernie. Yeah. You can actually I'm just going to make. Confirm it on his website. He has all his dates. Yeah. He was there. <laughs> on Jesus's website? Yep. Jesus.com. Totally. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. Love it. I would have thought he would have like a dot org or a dot. Yeah, dot com. No, he's in exactly. business. It's Jesus dot God slash yeah, dot God slash God. tour dates. Yeah, <laughs> that is okay. a great yeah. domain though. But it was um, oh. it was a passionate experience, and it gave me like a lot of. Did you have to hold it, hands with strangers? No, no, it wasn't that. But it, w- it did have that kind of really like everybody's in this sort of vibe, um, and and there were a bunch of great speakers to begin with. I thought the most. Uh, impressive was um, a senior in high school, oh. um, young lady who was a, a climate change organizer, an activist, and was hella involved apparently with a lot of indigenous organizations. And um, and she, young white lady, she was kept kept shouting out, "We have to give the indigenous peoples in these areas like rights for their things and listen to what their choices are going to be for the environment that you know we're all cohabitating in." And kept like pushing for policy around that. And it was, it was passionate and she was into it. It was cool. Um, and Bernie came out and the fucking place went nuts. You, People stomping their feet and like bur- the Bernie like wave just went up. He was, it was, it was <laughs> did, uh, nuts. did a bird land on him? No, but it seemed like uh, that ought to happen. Like there thing was a is, golden It only feet. has to happen once. And now yeah. that is the forever symbol. Yeah, no, you got to say it would be fucking hilarious but if it happened every I, time. God, they like God. they went through great pains to stage that. Right. right. He yeah, has a bird much, that travels with him. Yeah. It's like Joe Blue from Arrested Development. There's just like some magician backstage with a bunch of doves ready to yeah. like shoot out at any point. Yeah. <laughs> I love you that. know, yeah. in certain parts of the world, they'll do this thing where they like uh, they release a bird, a caged bird for you, like mm. on some like, oh, pray for your sick family member or something and they release okay. bird but then the the whole gimmick is that the bird is like domesticated and just comes, comes back, back just flies right back home yeah. yeah just do it over and over 
It's a uh, starving, sedated bird. But I get it. Bernie.God is not doing that. And uh, I, I respect that very much. Uh, that was a real authentic bird experience. You know what I mean? It was. It was, pro- it was Birdie. Uh, Birdie. Yeah. Bernie and Birdie. Uh, so, so it was good times. You it was, saw it was powerful. His speech was, you know, great. He had he had these like boo and yeah patterns going on. Mm-hmm. So he'd like get you into the like boo, say another bad thing, and he and they wanna da, 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 da. boo and they wanna da, 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 da. and what he's doing blah blah blah, 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 blah boo. And and then he'd switch it up and he and he'd be like, but what we're gonna do is a duh. And the first time yeah. that would come out, everybody'd be like, uh, uh, oh yeah, we're getting out of the booze now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like booze. <laughs> yeah. Well that's 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 so like the difference between a rally and a campaign speech um is the difference yeah. between like a a liturgical preacher yeah. and a revival church. Yeah, there you go. Okay. I like that. Right. That's a great it's like the whole point of a sermon in like a Pentecostal revival meeting is you're building to a crescendo emotionally for the audience, mm-hmm. right? The whole thing is about that interaction and about that push and pull. Like what you just described, I could tell you 5,000 examples of sermons that use that tension and release kind yeah. of kind of idea. Um, but it's exactly like sometimes it's laughter and crying. Sometimes it's stand up and sit down. Sometimes it's excitement and silence. Sometimes it's Wu Tang. Exactly. There you go. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Um, the church but, of Rizza. But what's interesting about that is that the 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 concept behind it, whether it's deliberate or not, is that it's emotionally exhausting. Um, is that th- when you go through that process from the beginning to the end, it breaks emotionally breaks down your resistance to whatever the message is. So as long as you're in the trance of every, exactly the same concept of like mass trance. When you look at like, you know, the, the, uh, dog one, uh, what was, what was the actual dude's name? Uh, Bajwan. Yeah. Bajwan. This is exactly the same idea, right? Like you built, like you, you have this sort of chaotic emotional roller coaster to break you down psychologically so that at the end of it, you're just vulnerable to the message and the message sinks in. That's the, that's the process that's tried and true. But the thing is from a political standpoint, it makes sense to use it because people love that part of it. P- Cause, because you, you want that as a human. And when you walk out of there, you feel totally fulfilled and engaged and excited. It's not to negate the message. It's not to say the message is wrong, but the process of opening it up an audience to the message comes from getting the audience to, Get so involved, you can actually get involved. Yes, yeah. so, yeah, you can yeah. say uh, Bloomberg's going to be real good at that. Yeah, Bloomberg. Like, so no, I was just thinking. Not at all. I was just thinking about that when you said Bloomberg sucked on stage. I haven't seen any of it. I could guess that he sucks on stage. He's he's so turtle like. Just like he's like the other type of turtle. Like him and McConnell fused together actually do become an aquatic yeah, creature, like a proper like, turtle. They are either types, or maybe he's a tortoise and McConnell's. Oh, there you go. There you go. Is the way his lips go together? Yeah. The look you had on face, like constipated ass motherfucker. (laughs) So I like. Uh, Not a good one. I have a theory on Bloomberg. Yeah. Um, Yeah. There, there, one of two options, and maybe both of them are at play here. I don't. First of all, I don't think, um, I don't think Bloomberg is surprised by the idea that he's bad in a debate. I don't think that's something that is surprising to him. I think that's been a resistance to him to getting into politics for a long time. And he knows this is the part of it I'm bad at. Yeah. And with that in mind, I think he knows he's going to largely fail, quote unquote, fail the debates, but get some messages out and like withstand whatever happens. Right. I think what he knows he's going to win at is ad Money. buying. Yeah. Yes. Ad buying yeah. online uh-huh. and in re- regional and on TV. Areas, yeah. Right. Yeah. But it's specifically on TV in regional areas, like he's testing the message now. He's testing the message in a national campaign. You can see basically here's what I see when I see those commercials. I see a template that's being used with multiple versions of messages, yeah. mostly the same photography and videography and graphics. Um, and what that means to me is that there are hundreds, not a couple, there are hundreds of those commercials flying all over 
the country. Yeah. You know, all of us are seeing different You're versions right. of messages yeah. all over the place. They shot tons and tons of footage. They got tons and tons of messages together, and they tested them all over the country. That's how you spend smart money in marketing. We're all uh -huh. seeing whatever message he thinks we should see at that time, and we'll test if that's the message ultimately. Yeah. We see. Or his well-paid staff. Exactly. Think. So my theory is this. So I, I think he's smart about I, – I, I guess what I'm saying is – I don't give that much credence or I don't think it hurts him that much to be bad at debates right now because I think he has enough money to spend in a way that other politicians just can't plan. For, right. Yeah, I think you're right. So about that. with that in mind, I think he's got one of two ideas playing again, maybe both of them. One is I, he might be betting on splitting the vote. He might be betting on being that dividing factor that he can pull enough people away from the sort of mainstream um, democratic thing as all the extremes go this way or that way. And he can present himself as the sort of, you know, middle ground yeah. candidate who's financially responsible and blah, blah, blah. But also he can pull enough from the Trump's a billionaire. So he should be good at being president group. You know, the we want a businessman in the in the White House, yeah, we want yeah, the, this yeah. or that. He can speak to that. So I think he's he's planning for for the people who aren't watching the debates. He's planning for a whole bunch of votes for people who know very little about him yeah. to just pull a lever like, OK, I'll try another businessman. Right. But then the second thing I'm curious about is look at this whole impeachment process and the whole like Ukraine scandal and like trying to dig up dirt on politicians and blah, blah, blah. Right. The P tapes and the, you know, whatever, like this history of combative campaigning, yeah. right. The battleground of campaigning and especially on these rich old white men who have lots of skeletons in their closet. Oh yeah. Um, it's ratcheted up now. Yeah. Bloomberg obviously has some skeletons in his closet, but, oh, yeah. he, but he obviously knows what they are. He does a terrible time of responding to them. And yeah. he failed in this debate in that regard. I, I heard about I heard about that. So that's yeah. why I, that's, that's what yeah. brought it up. Um, but here's what I get at. I think he's got enough money to pull up dirt on fucking anybody. Well, that but, he may have. But and he's, I think he's, he's got I think he knows that the dirt that he has is worse than the dirt that's on him. Well, it's 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 not. I'm not, I'm not saying that is. But I know, but I but it's. One I don't think it. I think Trump kind of proved it isn't even about the the value of the dirt. It's just dirt is dirt, and the reality is so so like Trump may look way worse, but if he can make his opponents look also bad, somehow that's like equal, you know. And and the problem with Bloomberg is he. Describe it. That makes sense. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. Yeah. Ahead. Yeah. Go ahead, Ron. Well, I'm just saying, like <laughs> Bloomberg is like his dirt is not good. Like he's he's said yes. some really yeah. bad, and sexist, sexist and racist yeah. stuff, sure. yeah. and he's taken actions that accord with it. And furthermore, <laughs> he's he's like not just like Biden, which is the thing I hate about Biden. He can't just own it. You know, he says like, "Oh, yeah. I apologize for like stop and frisk." But he's kind of like, because we used it, like, too much. Not like this was a misguided and bad thing altogether, but, like, this was a thing that went wrong. But even though I'm apologizing now, I'm also going to try to claim credit for, like, reeling it in or, or drawing it back or something. You know what I mean? Like, he can't yeah, acknowledge— Yeah, he wants to use the same device yeah, that's like... getting him in trouble in order right. to bail himself out. Right. You, like, and, and that's how exactly how we responded to the stop and frisk by saying when I took over as mayor, there were 650 murders. And I right. thought human right to live is the most important. So I, you know, continued reinforcing policing in these particular neighborhoods where the crime was happening. And he yes, paid millions you know, of dollars for that answer. And, and pushing kids up against the wall and frisking them was the way that we did it. Right. And like, so, and that's, um, he, he didn't really even back down at all. He's like, yeah, I wish he said yeah, one thing. Like I look back. One thing I look back at my mayor all time and have as a regret is not having, you know, phased that out, you know, earlier or, or whatever, you right. know, like, not, and that's like, that's how he said it. Like, or kind of like, Oh yeah. I'm and it's like, and oh. he's talking about this stuff in the last 10 years at private events where he's trying to hide the audio. Yeah. Oh, all yeah. I'm saying is at the end of the day, he can dig up, if it comes down to a general election, he can dig up as much dirt 
against Trump as possible. Most of that's already going to have been out there. And most of it, Trump's going to be able to say, this guy Trump is did something super similar. He's Trump's accusing improved. me of being sexist or racist or whatever. Yeah, exactly. here's, here's file audio of him being those same things. So how can he be the counter to Trump? You know, like right, George exactly. Conway, Kellyanne Conway's husband, the lawyer, he, he tweeted something that was like, uh, imagine somebody that had the money to research what Fox News viewers didn't know about Trump and then had the money to spend on ads on Fox News to educate those people about those things about Trump. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yeah, that sounds great. You know, the data guy, the guy with the money, the guy who can spend. Right. But he is not going to appear righteous to anyone. He's going to he, he, you don't have to spend even a quarter as much money as him to make him look like a shithead because he is one. You know what I mean? Like, that, but that assumes that the message gets loud enough. Right. Well, so like the so like the grabbing by the pussy soundbite was loud enough in the sense that it permeated media that so that you could not associate with Trump without addressing that soundbite. The soundbite for, for like him week. is going to be I I want a blowjob. That's his that's his soundbite. Is I want a blowjob from her. Have you seen her? Even though she's fifty, not bad. I want a blowjob. That's his right. soundbite. Okay, but uh, the question is, will it permeate the audience the way that some of these and and again to your point, Rob, it didn't stop Donald Trump from becoming president and et cetera. Right. But I would I would argue that that's the exception to the rule. And that not everybody is Donald Trump. Not that he's I know. Gifted, not that he's gifted, but he is maybe exactly. specifically, specifically good at campaigning and is that's, specifically good at debating on the new game show style think, of debating. Yeah. But that's so, why I think Bloomberg is the exact worst he's the no, worst opponent agree. for I agree. him. Like I agree. because of what you just said. But here's the question, perhaps, is that okay, so you didn't watch the debate tonight. I watched some of it. Buren, I think, watched most or all. Bloomberg, this tortoise guy, looked uh, like he was angry inside, like he was offended. Um, like but he, he even was, had to be there. Yeah, like he was doing his best to compose himself. And the only thought I had the whole time is this guy is thinking to himself, fuck you, Democrats. I will just go yeah. back to being an independent and run as a third-party candidate and fuck it all up. And I yeah. almost thought he might make that declaration might tonight. Say it tonight yeah <laughs> exactly like he looks so hurt and and i could totally see him doing that oh yeah. i think that's but, what he's but gonna I, do and then you get trump too but he again. can't do that before like that's what bothers me about elizabeth warren and and like again i haven't heard <coughs> these i haven't i haven't watched the debate so i don't know if bernie has dipped into this too so i don't mean to protect him so yeah. i'll but i'll just say that i haven't heard bernie do this the same way i've heard elizabeth warren but i haven't watched the debates i've heard these on other Sound bites and interviews. Oh, everybody went after Bloomberg today. Well, my Hard. point is, my question is, has Bernie gone after the the long term relationships and the character of the people that he has these relationships with that are on the panel? Because it seems like, to a degree, everybody else has, right? So, to a degree, and Elizabeth Warren, I still really like her. I still really like yeah, her. Yeah, she's I, fantastic. I, I, and I think as a campaigner versus a politician, I'd rather have her as a politician because I want that bulldog fuck you in the mouth kind of attitude in the room when we're negotiating legislation. I don't want it on the campaign trail. I don't want it on the stage. But she has that energy. Bernie strikes me as the kind of person who's not throwing his friends under the bus. He's trying to be honest about the thing that matters. Bloomberg... Trump, et cetera, they're throwing whoever else under the bus that they can because it's just a, whoever That's wins, true. wins, right? Yeah. But it strikes me that most of the Democratic candidates across the board outside of those people are just devouring each other. I well, mean, just yeah. like Biden, too. Like yeah. Biden and Kamala kind of started this and like the other candidates like over time. They're just slinging so much shit that it makes you not want to vote for any of them. Well, I don't degree, know. I, I I, I hear that, but I also think like this is what primaries are about, you know. Yeah, like, we're like, to it, but like, well, we're but just... I mean, at the end of the day, like, it's true. There's a thin line between calling someone an asshole and saying you made an asshole move. You know what I mean? Like, those are those are sound very similar, and and I I kind of agree that Bernie's pretty good at just saying you made an asshole move or that's where you're wrong. 
not you're wrong or you're an asshole. Um, but Warren, at least according to like the Politico kind of press, her whole strategy has been not to attack people. And tonight she did. Um, but and and she obviously has that capacity. She went around the room and got everything. <laughs> <laughs> right. It was yeah. filthy. Like, it was great. I heard she, I mean, yeah. she was like, Sweet. and you, yeah. and you, and hold on, I'm not finished with you. And then, hey, oh, yeah, and Joe, you thought you were going to slide. No, 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 no. But and- everybody <laughs> had a little a little hot sauce for Mike. You know what I mean? Everybody yeah. had a little oh, something in their bag. Some hot sauce on but then, yeah. but then um, yeah, I mean, I think that's, I think the authenticity of the candidates is what people are really gravitating towards. And I think, I think Elizabeth Warren also has a lot of authenticity to who she is and who she projects. And I think she may have just a pinch less in some people's view than Bernie. And that's why in that progressive camp, he's carrying that mantle a little bit. Yeah. I don't know the reason why that's perceived, but I'm thinking that I I really feel like, like that connectivity to all of us is what, is what is making well, look, people want to I, I actually, people. even though I like her a lot, I feel the way you just described. And, and I think it's because of what's been demonstrated by each of them. Like, I think as great as she is, she, to me, has shown herself to be going, uh, you know, like, you know, not necessarily just with her gut, but also with the, like, What's the smartest move? Yeah, yeah, what's the smart move, whatever. Whereas Bernie truly, to me, feels like someone who's just going, I know the what's, answer to that. Yeah, exactly. This is, this is how I feel what I that. think. Exactly. Yeah. You know, exactly. um, yeah. and, and if you're going to give me shit about it, so what? But, like, an example for me was, like, Warren, like, she was my favorite for a while. And part of that was because yeah. I believed in, like, the electability that she was just more electable and younger and she was a woman and i just yeah, you know yeah. bernie as much as i loved him like it just seemed like ah you know he probably won't catch on you know he probably had his moment um and i thought she might catch on and she's still to have it but i think one thing that hurt her was was when when the debates were you know in the early phases people were asking like uh you know how are you gonna pay for medicare for all and shit and she was like i'm not she would say what she wouldn't do like basically she would give yeah, a bunch yeah. of like guidelines but she wouldn't say exactly what she would do where bernie would just be like i'm gonna raise these taxes but you're gonna save here and it's gonna be a net gain for you exactly you know what i mean yeah uh just shameless this is what it's gonna be even though it wasn't politically like smooth sounding per se and i think people heard that and they were like because because when you hear oh people like their insurance company i don't fucking give a shit about my insurance company i like having quality healthcare coverage and knowing that I'm safe. And I think that's what most people feel, but I don't think anyone's like, just like they're not saying American politics is just dandy. They're not going, you know what I love is calling into the old insurance company and just waiting on hold. Or, you know, when I get to pay that copay or, you know, get a new card every year, it just makes me proud. That's not what I think people really think. Warren came out here and was kind of saying, I feel like she wanted a little of everything. Like she wanted to say, yes, I'm for Medicare for all Bernie's damn bill. Um, No, it's not going to raise taxes on this group or that group. And no, I'm not going to tell you exactly how it's going to work. And she built up a ton of expectation for it. And then when she came out with the explanation of how things were going to work, she basically punted, you know, a little while and said like, well, you know, it's not going to be immediate, whatever. That's fine. If she had been saying that from the beginning, you know what I mean? I think it would have been just fine with people. But the fact that she kind of wanted credit for everything yeah. and then what she came out with felt was like close, but not exactly like what she had been saying. Eventuality shit, yeah. It just I mean, that, like that, that kind of stuff's bugging me. Calculated. Like, well, it's, a, it's a weird like line to walk because I actually almost commented on this earlier that when you guys kind of started talking about the debates... I felt like all the comments were about the personalities of the people uh-huh. yeah. and none of the substance of character well, the- or beliefs or whatever. And and it wasn't an indictment on you guys. It's the conversation that's happening uh, about these candidates. And yeah. it's kind of the yield of this debate process. Um, but because well, the policies, they're all pretty. We know what their policies are. They're so obvious with, you know, we've heard it. 18 right. Times well, especially just, now. Right. You especially know, now yeah. on the same stage. <clears throat> all kind it's really of easy to see where everybody fits right. on everything. And you kind of know that going in. But like um, one of the things I can appreciate about something you just said, Rob, is like at, 
I've been working at, in, in a startup, as you guys know, and like working on all kinds of projects within that startup to make things happen. And one of the things that I've just had to like learn to accept is that we'll have this project, we'll set a deadline, everything seems like we understand what's going to happen, everything seems like we know all the steps that are between here and there, and then we start taking steps and the thing just multiplies. It just evolves in such a way that like, holy shit, this is harder to do than we thought, or whoa, that's way more complicated than I thought, or whatever. So we've had all these conversations with people and then we have to go back and go, hey, look, we are definitely the people to solve this problem. I trust us to solve it. It's just not the solution we thought it was going to be at first and et cetera, et cetera. So when you take that thinking to the campaign trail and you're thinking about like economics for 300 million people, um, like you're not going to have quick solutions like that. It, the campaign finance is not meant to solve the country's problems. It's meant to help you campaign the campaign being one gives you access to the resources of the country to now go solve these problems. Um, so it's a kind of a, a, an issue I've always had with, with campaigning in general is that there's like, there's personalities, there's your theory and your topic and your like whatever. And then there's the reality of governing and they're totally, yeah. they're, they well, yeah, for sure. so and, fundamentally and, different. And American presidential <laughs> politics in particular has for a long time, um, at least my adult life been like well when i'm president i'm gonna give lollipops to all the babies you know what i mean and and, and there's like right. so many exactly like like giveaways or, or i remember or, that year it was great when well i, I guess that, the, the, the point, my the day point though for me is like people claiming that they're gonna do shit that they can't do without a whole system of support from congress and so on yeah and, and that that that's important but I, I kind of feel like in the case of the Bernie and Warren thing, it's like Bernie wrote the Medicare for all bill in the Senate, like to to presume that he hasn't thought out yeah, exactly. how this thing works and how he's going to play the politics. Like well, he can't control what the composure of the Senate is going to or the composition of the Senate is going to be in 2021 or whatever. And neither can any of the candidates. But of all the people out there. I'd kind of feel like, hey, this dude knows how the Senate works. He knows how the House works. He knows politics. And he's got a plan. You know what I mean? Right, like, exactly. it just it's just like, I don't know how Seems much more prepared obvious. you can be right. on that front. You know what I'm saying? Like, well, yeah. And no, the problem is, is that he's not giving the right answer to that when he's confronted with it in the debate. And that's one of the things that annoys me the most about. I love I I love the guy I love his policies, but when he's confronted with the healthcare thing, he doesn't explain it satisfactorily enough, and that's why he keeps getting asked it. Now they talk about this number of fifty trillion, right? Uh -huh. um, and Buttigieg put, kept kept at him on that tonight. He's like, "Yeah, but your tax increases only cover half of it. Where's the other half coming from?" Da -da 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 -da. Uh -huh. And there are several responses because at, first of all, you're right. Um, he has run numbers on this, and that's why there's legislation for it. It's been worked over by many, many minds beyond just his as far as how the financing for all this will work. But secondly, and I think this would be the thing to say in a, like a debate environment, is um, what have you – you know, so it's $50 trillion is the gr gross – Healthcare costs in our country. I don't know if that's the figure. I haven't done the math. I don't know where. 30, but I, I don't know where that research is coming from. Right? Yeah, 30, I don't understand. Thirty trillion, trillion or whatever. That's yeah, a crazy yeah. number. It's a begin. crazy fucking number. Yeah. Say, say, it does cost that. The response is: Have you seen a bill from a hospital? Have yeah. you looked at those statements? Fifteen thousand dollars for this thing that took somebody half an hour to do to you, with a few other tools. Yeah. That the numbers we can get them better than half. Most of, we're paying eight times more on this medication than they are in Denmark. Well, guess what? We're going to see a reduction of at least, you know, 75% on that shit. Right. Um, so like that sort of a thinking is so common sense and would get the point across to people about what this new medical world is going to look like that they're yeah. going to, th you know, that's what he needs to sell. And if you well, could sell that point, yeah. he'd, he'd win. But it's, I think not selling, I, it's not selling it to people though. It's selling it to the media. Well, because yeah, the media is. is going to repeat that statement over and over and over again. Right. So Obama sold in his campaign to the media. I'm going to provide health care for everybody. And then after Obamacare, quote unquote, was enacted and et cetera, then the message became what well, everyone can get health care. That was yeah. the solution. Great. 
and it was just a very semantic kind of shift and cool we're good but it was like a it was like a consistent kind of theme that you could kind of present and say here's the whole plan and we'll figure it out as we go yeah. but like so many of these so many of these concepts i mean like free college are two words put together that can't be erased now in the in the american yeah. psyche yeah. Yeah. right and that doesn't feel inevitable to me but it feels like an inevitable topic from now on until it is and it's and healthcare be. for every and it should be i totally agree and warren and, does a good job of of putting that kind of thing into perspective when she talks about like a wealth tax you know what i mean right. like yeah. bernie's using different terminology but when warren talks about it to me it feels kind of like because she'll be like yeah so people like mike have to pay a few extra pennies per dollar or whatever right. nothing to them free college for all y'all that resonates in my opinion yeah, you exactly. know what i mean like like because because at the end of the day bloomberg what did he say they asked him tonight they were like bernie said billionaires shouldn't exist yeah do you think you should exist should you be a billionaire and he's like well yeah i worked hard yeah. motherfucker you know how many people worked hard do you understand right. the degree what, what of a luck? stupid answer what a yeah. stupid answer yeah, I like, deserve it. Like I worked you worked billion money. dollars hard, and the rest of us are working thousand dollar hard. Stupid answer. And, yeah, and Bernie and Bernie was able to roast him on the next come around because oh, okay. they call they tried to call Bernie out for wanting to <coughs> mandate um, employee Chuck ownership God. of large corporations. Yeah. So if if you know if this is a large multi billion dollar corporation based here in America, you have to phase into twenty percent shareholder. Group, right? Yeah, yeah, shareholder value held by your employees, right? And um, and he's like, yeah, I think that's a you know necessary thing. And he's backing up, and he's like, and by the way, you know, uh, Mike, um, you, you think you worked hard? I bet you a lot of the people that worked for you worked hard for yeah, you to get right. your billion dollars. And you, Mike's face was like. Oh, I never thought about that. Right. right. Oh, exactly. uh, oh, it's oh. just such a dumb. Like the, the the correct answer, Mike Bloomberg, if you're listening, is I, think I am. He is, by the way, I, I am so. <laughs> I am so grateful. He's a sponsor for the blessings and opportunities of my life, and I am so grateful for the position that I've been allowed to be in to now take these opportunities and share and expand with the United States, with this country that I love and use this skill and this experience, et cetera. But I stand here on the shoulders of giants, the people who have supported me, blah, 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 and shift. Yeah. You dumb I mean, motherfucker, don't say you worked hard for a billion dollars yeah. for many, many billion dollars. But I think, yeah. I don't think he yeah. would understand that because he believes it. And furthermore, another part of his excuses is, is how much in philanthropy he gives, which yeah. I believe yeah. is extreme. He gives a lot. Uh, to charitable causes and relative to different to causes. What? Well, relative to other people, right? Right, but relative to his cash. Right, exactly. And furthermore, I personally like the idea of a society making its priorities of what exactly. that should go to rather than just one guy who thinks he worked super hard getting to choose where all that excess goes. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, And that's what like Warren's way of spinning it to me kind of indicates is it's like she's saying instead of letting a couple of super super wealthy people choose their pet causes let's just all agree like right. shouldn't all our kids exactly. like like right now i've got a one and a half year old basically or soon to be and i don't know exactly how i'm gonna pay for college for him if somebody said to me that's kind of a crazy thing for you to have to worry about 20 years in advance right. or whatever. We're just going to have that be a part of our society. Like you won't have to worry right. that he's going to be like your decisions just now uneducated and stuck with a life. baby are going <laughs> to yeah. potentially handicap your child 20 years from now. That's just not going to be a factor or whether your parents are sick or all this different stuff. You know, this, this is like, easy to me and and the only reason people don't believe it is because the cynicism from the media and the lobbyists and the industry and the republicans making everybody think there's not enough to go around these guys are selling you fantasies and and the worst thing is the dems personal, do it too that's what i was gonna say because personal attacks aside 
these fucking moderates exactly saying shit like, oh, well, I'm not going to be up here promising you stuff that can't be. You know, it's like... Yeah, basically trying to call him, like, what did Klobuchar say, like, crackpot ideas about Bernie shit in the last debate? Not this one tonight, yeah. but, like... Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, that's just... come Really? I, like, I remember when there was a little more subtlety to the way mud was slung. And it wasn't that long ago. There yeah. was this kind of veil of cordiality over the whole event. You know, even though you knew it was kind of dirty. It was like, the shit that we saw tonight was uncontested like brawling yeah the way, i mean the way people were popping off the way pete threw it at amy after she got called out on the mexican president's name he just kept, he's like oh yeah but you don't know that and then it went and he was like oh yeah but amy doesn't know the president of mexico oh did he? And like, I didn't after, part, yeah. he brought it back on i was like kind of in and out times. of this thing, oh yeah, yeah. <sighs> he kept nailing it and that's and weak. like that's weak on his that's part that's corny cause, dude because because that's like somebody yeah. stuttering or whatever and, and trying right. to jump on that as if it's an indication that it they're was. dumb. Yeah. But but these moderates and their their negativity towards this stuff, like, they really believe it, but it just goes to show what, like, basic motherfuckers they are. You know what I mean? Because they can't, they can't grasp the idea that the 90-plus percent of people out here, if they chose to believe in their collective power could rewrite the rules. They're stuck in the belief that there's no way around guys like Mike. He's got the power and he's never going to let us do that. So let's do exactly. stuff that he likes too. You well, know what and, I mean? And, and, and Meshach brought up something earlier regarding like how this whole situation would work out in, in, in Bloomberg taking the nod. The only, in my opinion, the only way that that's going to happen, especially now that he's missed several States Mm-hmm. is for him, even though those weren't big states, Bernie's still going to win a lot of the states from here on out. Mm-hmm. Um, most likely, I think, unless, be, unless something weird happens. Yeah. That's, that's yeah. what it's looking like. And in fact, the last question of the evening was the most poignant. And I'll get to why. What Bloomberg's only real hope for is to somehow end up at the convention and have, in the meantime, been able to switch a bunch of people's allegiances to voting for him and putting him in as the nom. There's the super delegate group of the 500 and something folks. And then there's the fact that at the convention itself is when a lot of the votes are actually counted. Again, you have all your primary counts and okay. they go to the convention and you count them again. The delegates are supposed to show up and represent honestly how their state performed, but it is the convention for that reason. So that's how the process is built. The last question of the evening was posed with Sanders in to take the last answer intentionally because they knew exactly how the answers would go. And they said, do you believe that the candidates in this election cycle should carry the delegates that they've gained through primaries and caucuses around the country through the convention and that that total number of delegates should be what who the nominee is based upon? Or should procedure of the Democratic Convention be right. the rule of the day? And they went to everybody, and they were like, "No, we should follow procedure. Follow procedure. Yeah. Follow procedure. Yeah. Follow procedure." And then follow Bernie's procedure. like, "Bernie's like, nah." There's 500 super nah, delegates. There's 500 the super delegates. I'm doing this campaign thing right now. The people that are my delegates should go be my delegate. Like, you know, what? What are you talking about? No, yeah. this isn't. Some weird fiasco where this guy with all the fucking money can jump in there and exactly. throw it under the fucking table but, and, and pull my rug out. From but here's the thing. I don't believe – so of all the answers, Bernie's obviously I liked because let's talk about the superdelegates. You know, like does, yeah, the, yeah. does the DNC want to talk about that in their debate? Probably not because um, they want to just kind of act like that's okay. You know, this system that they've rigged up is okay. But – I just can't get over the idea that Mike is not in it for that either. He's he's getting that same machine Meshack was referencing of data and, you know, analytics and all that into what he can do as a third party candidate. Because I just don't I just don't see like yeah. why else would he yeah. be playing it so safe on all this stuff like being so moderate like he's he's more I mean moderate like. He's more right. He's like, yeah. He's, he's, he's more, more conservative right. exactly. than 
anyone on that stage by really far. And I think the reason is, is because he believes he can pull Republicans, right? Yeah. So he's he's running in the Democratic field, both because he wants to be against Trump, and that's the obvious way to do it. But I think also just as an experiment to see how many Dems he can get, right? Like if he can get 20-something percent of the Democrats to vote for him and let's say he pivots to being an independent in a couple of months and then he looks at how many independents he can get and how many republicans he can get suddenly delegates at a democratic convention you know are really not the the points he's trying to score anyway you know what i mean and yeah. i just i don't trust that motherfucker i think he is absolutely trying to play the third party thing and this is just the way to do it you know what i mean no and and it's proof that we've allowed We've the door is now ajar to nefarious fucking assholes to try to right. take over the country. As soon as we elected Trump, this inevitability came to rise that we would have now for the foreseeable future, likely a string of billionaire fucking asshats yeah. who think they know better. Yeah. And and are gonna come and fucking throw their shit at them. I mean, yeah, even maybe the Bezos. Devs, even so I th- why not? Doesn't that Absolutely. doesn't that naturally lead to I my like my mind just went to this, okay? Bloomberg knows he's not suited for politics, but he wants the office. Why didn't he just hire somebody better and run the campaign for him um, and just let them be president? He fund the whole thing and then he's their he's their pocketbook. Right. Ego. So in my mind, Ego and yeah, power. He, he doesn't care about being the guy. He wants to control it. Um, but when, where my mind went to is doesn't that l- logic lead to sometime in the you know, um, idiocracy future oh, yeah. where where all of these candidates are just professional actors who have been hired by billionaires to yeah. run for president. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think uh, some people some are accusing they are young now. Pete of that. Some ways you know what I mean? Yeah. But, I mean, to a, yeah, to an extent, that's kind of the model that's been set up. But like, wouldn't it, wouldn't it doesn't it seem like it's naturally leading to that being more overt? You know, yeah, could, I mean, could, can you see like George Clooney being funded by Bloomberg? Well, yeah. And you furthermore, know? I could see it being something that nobody cares about. People being like, so right. what? Yeah, that's fine. So and so is paying I for like George Moore. I like yeah. having President Clooney better than Bloomberg. Bezos you know? is paying for fucking, you it's know, whoever. Says. Yeah, to be president. And that's fine. You know, I, I don't doubt that. But I think, uh, you know, to the bigger point, the people who are genuine, like what I think Bjorn was saying at the very beginning, I think at the end of the day, still will stand the strongest chance because when your when your inherent ability to respond and react is just yours, it doesn't require asking someone else yeah. what you should answer or asking the consultants or the whatever. Like you're just more nimble, you know what I mean? And people read it and they see it. And I think in a weird way, Trump. He, like, like I can't stand, and I think he's so fucking sick. But I do remember when the Republican uh, primary in 2016 election was going on, and you had 10 of these guys up there, Rudy and Marco and whatever else. God, what a fucking You know, debacle. all these, oh, Ted Cruz, you oh. know what I'm saying? Ted Cruz for president, no, are you fucking oh, kidding me? You know, uh, he's doing well, too. But I enjoyed watching Trump on that stage at that time. Because A, I thought he was never going to go anywhere, but B, he just inherently could take it and flick it right back at them. You know what I mean? They'd be like, well, you this or that. And he'd say the most childish nonsense, but it was just right there. It wasn't like, you know, it wasn't him being afraid. If I say this, I'll get in trouble or whatever. You know, it's just this is what I'm going to say. Oh, you called me ugly. I'm going to call you fat. You know, whatever. It's just and, and granted, that's not the same as somebody who has principles, but I'm just saying the same place of Mm -hmm. your ability to just retort. You know what I'm saying? It's just right there in your throat. It's not, but I think like, you know, to a degree, we've talked about this on this cast, like Obama was such a weird, like Obama and Clinton to a certain degree 
were such weird outliers because they had this like charisma, political talent. They had a force of support behind them that like they had the right timing from a political standpoint for co- control and all that kind of like they were such anomalies. Obama, Obama especially in his campaign, the first campaign was such a fucking tidal wave that took over the country. Not that it was just some landslide of campaign, but it was like it definitely felt like a shift. Yeah. Right. And it felt like a shift going from Clinton to Bush and then to this totally more polished, way better president, you yeah. know, in a lot of ways, flawed in thousands of ways that we've archived on this podcast, but a, a better candidate, you know, yeah. just so good at so many things. Yeah. He's the Kobe Bryant of candidates. Right. R.I.P. Um, right. So within that, like, structure when you look at somebody like Obama, uh, somebody like Bernie or somebody like Buttigieg or Biden or Trump, they're all missing so many things. They're all like each one of them is missing some key element to being able to be this complete politician that has the charisma and the trustworthiness and the background and the intelligence and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera and the credibility and the validate like to have the whole picture. That is so rare yeah. yeah. Um, but that's what we're all like still drunk. But, on. You know, you know, one thing, though, is uh, I think primaries are funny in that they like there's stages to a presidential campaign in the U.S. and it's very long and drawn out. But when even though it's not that long, when the general election is the real thing, pretty soon, you know, you kind of can't give a fuck anymore about how you got here or mm-hmm. whether somebody else would have been better. You're now just looking at this person versus that person. You know what I'm yeah. saying? And and then if you think about running mates too, there's a point when you don't know who's going to be the VP nominee for someone like Clinton and Kane or, you know, whatever. Right, right. And then that person becomes it. And you almost can't remember when they weren't part of the ticket. Right. Because now they're just synonymous with this thing. Although um, Tim Tim Kane bad example because oh, man can I remember when he got added? <laughs> well, and I remember when Palin got added what a and Biden. Piece. I mean, what a useless ad. Usually the yeah. the VPs are are not the best, right. but I'm just I'm just saying it more as like yeah. you you move, you have a there's a tendency to be in the moment of where the campaign is, and the thing is to me is as much as I dislike some of these people, um, especially the way they're doing things. And as much as it's not for me, politics is also a business and a game. And I would have to say, like, and I'd be interested what your guys' picks would be. If I had to pick, like, my favorite of my least favorites, I do think it'd be Pete. Because I believe that if he were the candidate in the, like, I think right now he's playing an angle that I don't like. And and I want more than what he has to offer. You know what I mean? But if it were him versus Trump, I'd fucking, by all means, go vote for him. Um, yeah. And and I think he'd be an effective kind of counter to Trump, both, like you know, I was saying earlier, because he was a war vet, but also just because he's a little quick and feisty. And, you know, he's not someone who, like, you, you don't say something to him and he just goes like, Oh, sorry. You know, and like ducks away. He he keeps swinging. You know what I mean? I'm, so, I'm curious yeah, though. Do yeah. you mean do you mean that you still favor him after Trump? Do you still like do you would do, would you still trust him if he won if he was president? Well, yeah. I'd have to see at that point. But I mean, if it were him in the general, um, I'd rather him than Mike than Joe Biden. I think than Amy Klobuchar. Uh, I think basically even though I really don't like him right now. And like I said, I keep wanting to kind of like him just a little bit at least. And I, and I way don't, but I'd have to say probably Bernie Warren Buttigieg, you know what I mean? Like in terms of who's left. Yeah. Did, Uh, and what, what happened with Andrew Yang for you guys? He he gave out. out. I know he dropped out, but like what, what for you guys, he just didn't have the maths. Yeah. He said, Hey man, he's, he's a very graceful and, and, and like, uh, well, emotionally intelligent guy. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Like he yeah. said something to the effect of like, I'm the math guy and I just can't sit here and ask like people to keep giving money to a campaign that I know won't get there at well, this right. point. Like, 
yeah. that's his electability. What I'm asking you about is whether you would support him in this hypothetical if he was the president. Oh, if he was still he, in the Oh, yeah. If he was still in the yeah. race, if he was still in the race, he'd be my third you, before he Pete. He would be for over sure. Pete, but under yeah. Warren? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um and that's because uh he's Fear, you would put him under Warren. That's how he's you too libertarian for me. Uh Okay. Okay. Uh, and not only that, but although um you know, he's got somewhat of a track record. He's new enough that I, right. I, I think he's genuine, but I, I know Warren, no, I, I know, right. I, I, I'm pretty sure where she's going to land on things. Um, I think, yeah, between Biden, Buttigieg and uh, Klobuchar picking a favorite out of those is kind of hard because they're so similar in so many ways. Um, I don't think Biden or Klobuchar would stand a chance against Trump, though. Mm-hmm. And I think that that's why I would then go with Budjig. And um, I think it would be a potentially powerful thing to have uh, a gay man who's married, you sure. know, because of a federal law and, you know, up against this fucking extreme bigot. And yeah. I, I think I think, you know, there could be some power in, in that moment. Um, well, yeah, look at it. He's he's a war vet and, and a lot of people have a homosexual family member. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I think a lot of people, even who who don't, who are kind of like anti, you know, who like homophobic or or not on board, not allies, as it were. Uh, I think even they, somewhere in their hearts, are like, yeah, but that could be my son, my cousin, or me, you know, whatever it might be. Um, you know what I mean? Like, just, there's just, something about him that's like. Yeah. Yeah, no, I agree. He's like your everyday dude. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like he's somebody you knew in high school <coughs> that you didn't like, even know he was gay. Oh shit, he yeah, is, yeah. and he's yeah. a war hero or whatever, and he was yeah. a mayor, and yeah, you know, he's like chill he's not, about everything. And he's a Christian. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah exactly. He loves Jesus. I, but he he has those points, and he's played it up so well, and like cuts. He clearly goes to acting and training classes. Right. The way that he spoke speaks and intones, and that was one of the things that I find disingenuous about him and mm-hmm. why I don't think Obama would carry this year. If Obama hadn't been the president Interesting. Okay. 20, 2008 to 2016, based on you were, you know, Obama's yeah. in every yeah. discussion, yeah. right? I was super excited for that political revolution yep. that didn't yep. really happen. Right. Yep. Uh, a friend of, a friend of uh, Amanda's said, um, we were, we talked briefly about politics and he called it the Trojan horse of Obama. Great. Obama was the Trojan That's horse yeah. of progressivism. You know what I mean? And, um, and I, I thought that was a good way to phrase it. And he, anyway, like his style of oratory was so similar to Clinton's in the like gestural dominance of body language, totally pa- pause, mm-hmm. uh, the, the desire to kind of emulate John F. Kennedy, I think, is yep. in many ways what modern democratic orders have gone for. And Clinton and Obama both kind of had those weighty pauses, had that yep. style of trying yep. to, every sentence was profound in a way, like was spoken with a drama. Um, I don't think that shit would carry, I think this time. And I think that's like what exactly the momentum is behind the Sanders and Warren campaigns, yeah. their authenticity is like, what we've addressed on from several angles this evening is that who's the same behind closed doors? Are they, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It's that personability element well, I, uh, I don't, that carries a lot of weight. I don't disagree uh, that Obama probably wouldn't necessarily get there if, you know, he were running in this environment. But, and and I, I can connect to the Trojan horse thing on a certain level because I remember when, you know, Bjorn and I were, in like 2006, like, oh, this dude, he should yeah, run. Like, yeah. if he runs, like, that would be so dope. I'd yeah. support him. We were supporting Obama before he declared for he was yeah. running for president, and he excited us and all that stuff. But when I think back, a large part of that isn't his fault. It was our own presumptions. You know what I mean? Yeah. He was talking about there's no red America, there's no blue. He was very much preaching a moderate, right, light, liberal light, but center center <laughs> yeah. left kind of thing the yeah. whole time. That's where his authenticity is, I think, right. is the thing. Right. So so mm-hmm. whether or not that would win or not, I think that's who he is. Like to this day, he's still saying stuff like that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, when, when they get quotes from him occasionally, it'll be, you know, more of that what we now see as moderate yeah. 
things have shifted a lot and there's been a lot of change. But I kind of feel like it's not necessarily where where he disappointed me, I think, was or, or where I feel maybe a little deceived was on like foreign policy stuff. I think he Climate. was right. He was well, not prepared for foreign policy. Well, I think on foreign policy, he just he he continued some very aggressive draconian shit, you yeah. know, that had been going on in the Bush administration that for most Democrats, I think we just assumed we're all anti all that this like extrajudicial killing of people yeah. with drones yeah, right. and all this different stuff like like that's yeah that's not us and and he was kind of like <laughs> cowboy dave calm yeah, down I mean, that real quick. but you know what i mean like i kind of feel like it's not all obama's fault it's kind of no, like no. some of the fault of us for just assuming yeah, that's fair. For and I think coming out of the bush, think... bush woods, uh, the bushes, coming out of the <laughs> bush bushes, woods. yeah, um, was what anything that's... other than what that dumbass out was of the about bushes was, is uh, a great title for Obama's book. Out of the bushes, I do like that. Yeah. <laughs> or uh, that's a, his book. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. That's strong. Out of the bushes, <laughs> dude. I had a really interesting conversation uh, on Valentine's Day. Um, my girlfriend was working, so I went to her place of business, which is a really nice Korean barbecue fusion restaurant in Fremont, and it got a, she got me a spot at the bar. Apparently, there was a guy sitting in the spot that they'd had for me who'd been there for too long and wasn't ready to go, I guess. So I sidled up next to him, and uh, you know we began conversing. Um, and he carried on about his wealth and how much money he had been making on these commercial properties from renting out heavy equipment and sold his company to this other company that just pays him money to keep renting out his places. And da 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 da, -da. Um, He's like, yeah, I got these houses in Oregon, Arizona, just bought a lake house down here, got a 65-foot yacht, did, and, and just carry on, carry on. And like he briefly like threw in, so what do you do? I was like, oh, I have a... Scandinavian retail store here in town. He's like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was part of Sons of Norway once. Da -da 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 -da. Carried back on to his shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> and I'm like, okay. After a little while, I was like, I'm getting kind of tired of having this conversation. And he was kind of encroaching on space a little bit. He wasn't drunk, but he'd like had a couple and was like, you know, close to me and talking. And he's, you know, this 50 year old heavy set white dude. And, you know, and I've been friendly, and cordial, and like <laughs> inviting enough to have a conversation and responded to him. And, ask questions and things like that anyway so at this point it was like all right i'm really not enjoying this any longer i have to figure out he's some just means. turning it around to be about yeah. him at every yeah, turn right exactly yeah i have to find what some do you do oh okay here's how i can actually shift yeah. this conversation so i was like pretty crazy year in politics in this country isn't it because i figured <laughs> <so>. <laughs> that we would have differing politics <laughs> Well done, sir. Yeah, and I was like, well you know done. what? The only way really right now is to do yep. a little thought social experiment yep. and get myself down to that chill, chill zen mode and realize I'm here in my girlfriend's you know, place of work. There's going to be no excitement on my behalf. I'm going to give this guy lots of wind because he's already talking over me in these realms. He's clearly going to overtalk me in politics. And I'm going to wait and I'm going to bait him. And I'm going to fucking be, and I was just like, just like, <laughs> all right, here we go. <laughs> and, uh, God, it worked fucking brilliantly. It was such a fuck. Like, I wish I'd been recording it all. Cause it was just one of those moments where you, you like, know, the Apple iPhone has a voice memo thing. Yeah, I gotta I use know. that, man. I use it for other things, but oh, I didn't. okay. This would have been a good one. Yeah, it would have. Uh, like, Hold on. I got to uh, text my, uh, okay, cool. Put it down on the counter and then just keep continue, you know? So he started by saying that he was shoulder scraping Republican, and I hadn't heard that term before. I've never heard that either. Hey, can you, can you define that? You know, yeah. hardworking, I guess. No, so it means you're a fucking hobnobber. Means you're so far to the right, apparently, that you're scraping the ground with your right shoulder. Oh, it's all the way to the right, hardcore extreme right. I was like, all right, cool, all right. So right. you don't support That's Trump then? Clearly, fine. So he's like, yeah, I voted for Trump, but he's an idiot. You know, I'd rather have somebody else. And I was like, well, like, who are you thinking? Like, Bill Weld. Like, is that who you're thinking? <laughs> who do you got? <laughs> like, who do you got? Bill Weld, Joe Walsh. <laughs> yeah. Who are you liking? And he's like, yeah, no, no. Like, I'll probably just end up voting for Trump again this time. You know, he's made me a lot of money. And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, the economy is doing strong. But, like, um, it wasn't really doing that well in 08 after the Bush years. And I think the person who kind of 
started this 10-year growth cycle was, was Obama. And he's like, yeah, yeah. And I did make some good money under Clinton, too. And I was like, yeah, so, you know, really in your professional life, you know, you didn't do that great under the Bushes. You did fantastically under Clinton. And you've continued doing all right under Trump, but that's largely because Obama did, really made you a ton of money. And, um, and so you've, you've done exceptionally well under Democratic presidents. He's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, I guess Bernie won't ruin the country. <laughs> that was his response <laughs> to that. That's actually <laughs> what a leap. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That, I was not expecting that leap. And 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 once that had been set in motion, I was like, yeah, you know, he's my choice as far as like policies and 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 ideas for the future of the country. And like, you know, um, I just I just imagine like you know even if like redistribution shit like went really extreme, you know what I mean? Like we're talking about maybe you having like three houses instead of four, you know, and but simultaneously getting to live in a society that has like fantastic education for everybody and healthcare for everybody. And like, he was worried about all these ax murders that he said kept happening in Portland by homeless people. And I was like, and we have mental health institutions and so all know about out that there high rate of ax murders to prevent Portland. all these ax murders in, the in Portland. Yeah. yeah. And he's just like, kind of like, Oh yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Mm -hmm. Doesn't yeah, doesn't, I I could see that yeah. I'm like okay, well I don't know well, how this. Like, so I find that really interesting though. So you, you, I mean, if I'm if I'm hearing you correctly, like you essentially listened and then pivoted at a opportune moment, illustrated you know that hey you know despite boogeyman talk, mm -hmm. you've actually done okay under these people. Somehow he volunteers that Bernie wouldn't destroy the country, which is mm -hmm. odd. Um, and it, and it makes me kind of think like, okay, cause when you start talking about you live in this society with this, this and that it's, I think there's a few things that aren't, uh, leveraged enough in that conversation. I, I'm not saying you, but, yeah, no, but no, in, yeah. in general, cause when we're talking about being competitive with other countries and, and like this world right. where there's coronaviruses right. and yeah. fucking whatever else, like we need to be the smartest country when we're worried yeah. about solving climate change or whatever else like yeah it'd be nice for me to not have to worry about my baby going to college yeah. but it'd be nice for everybody if maybe it's not him but someone in his generation with those opportunities figure some shit out that we really need to figure out yeah. and like get us back in the game and i feel like andrew yang was mm. you know kind of he saying was that talking stuff. about that you know yang and so i think there's something to be said for like his way of 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 addressing that stuff and it just makes me wonder like well two two things one uh how do you not get angry with these people who are shoulder scraping republicans uh and alienate them and instead get them like you did in this case to kind of see things in a certain way and then how do you illustrate it you know in the way that i think yang did to where it's like this is better but also for the people who aren't like the shoulder scraping Republicans, but the fear based people, how do you tell them, look, man, when we're talking about like free college or whatever else, it's not just you paying for everyone else. It's you and your kids and your family getting these same health care benefits, yeah. the same college. This is not like just the Democrats all of a sudden have a free ride on the Republicans. This yeah. is everyone. Like, even if you vote against it, I'm fighting for you to have and your family to have these benefits because i believe you deserve that too you know how do you like personalize it to that person well and I mean, it's yeah do you want to like the idea of living in a really nice cities and towns that are like upkept well and there's green shit around and yeah. like our hoods are less hoodie and our fuck everything right. in like <laughs> how our axe murders are less less murdery yeah. They, yeah. yeah, they use little. Sticks they have to poke fewer axes. <laughs> hatchets only. Hatchets only. <laughs> little tiny axes. Yeah. For it's like bat maiming instead <laughs> of axe gotta, killings, gotta, You know. Yeah. Uh, they throw little plastic <laughs> hatchets at you. Um, but no, I like that. I think selling that is something that another thing that the progressives don't do the best of. And I think right. you're right. That part of the narrative is like. Okay, we can boo, and that's that was part of the cycle of Bernie's like boo boos, yeah, yeah, yes. 
that should be the yeah, yeah, that fucking seals the deal. Because right. we're talking about the shit that you can only imagine, like movies, like sell them utopia. That's what politicians are doing anyways. Let's mm -hmm. really up the ante now. I love You know what I, I mean? What you're saying. It's carrots over sticks. And, yeah. And the, but the lesser of evils has driven the politics in this country for my entire lifetime. Yeah. I, as, as long as I can remember, people have voted for the lesser of evils. I yes. know. Hands fucking down. In the on your party side, you just vote for the party guy that you think is the least worst out of all of those guys, and then you're only voting for him because you think he's less worse than the other party. And it's just over and over and over again. But to exactly your point, Bjorn, and it's exactly your conversation with this dude, if you just present like, look, we both want the same fucking thing, man. We want the best fucking thing possible. Yeah. <laughs> like we both want this existence that's great for everybody. Let's stop yeah. talking about who's worse. Who is better? Yeah. Who yeah. Is and better how can we us? how can we continue, I, uh, yeah. you know, we don't have the luxury of time and a big head start that we still have a lead with that allows us to just keep figuring it out. Like we got to get our fucking heads in the game as a country. You know what I mean? In order like and I kind of feel yeah. like Bernie Bernie is to me right now, it's not really the easiest moment to articulate all that, but I think that's what he's poised to do is yeah. is to come out in the context of like a general election and say, Yeah, you've got one guy over here and a and a group of people funded by lobbyists and fucking, you know, the most profitable business segments of the country, um, telling you what we can't do. And then you can look at all these examples of people power and, you know, massive populations showing you what we could do if we sustain the effort. And, you know, his his idea of it being a movement and everything else. I just I can see why I didn't. He's he's un, unlikely to me to be where he is. But now that he's there, you know, it's like, yeah, I'm excited <clears throat> yeah. by it. And, yeah. and I do think me too. You know, like one of the biggest criticisms I hear about him is his supporters. It's not even yeah. him. People yeah. go, yeah, but his supporters are so mean online. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Have you heard the Bernie bros? They're, they're very Next rude and online. sexist or whatever. And it's like, well, probably 60% of those are just fucking trolls and Russian bots and shit. Yeah. Um, fucking 20% are just asshole people who still who behave like assholes, but at least want the right things. You know what I mean? And maybe 20% not Bernie. Yeah, exactly. None of them are him. him. Yeah. Cause even Warren today said, well, you know, we've all got to be responsible for our followers. Fuck what you. You can't be responsible. You can, no, you can influence exactly. them, but you cannot well, and Bernie control them. Because of that, Bernie had to disown his followers in Nevada that had apparently been talking shit to the hotel staff. Because their union uh, voted yeah. against him, decided to go against Bernie, yeah. um, because they like th to negotiate their own health care for their yeah. workers. And I mean, what the, first of all, who the, the is that the mob still in right, exactly. <laughs> Las Vegas, like right. running the unions down there? I mean, who does that? Well, and and actually to that point, because they talk about that a lot. Well, these guys spent years fighting for the health care they've got, yeah, and they believe in everyone having health care. Yes. But, but they don't want to, you no, know, that's I the same it. argument it, that, yeah. that people should not get uh, free college or their college debt uh, paid off because I didn't get mine paid off. And you know what? That is a American fallacy mentality that permeates so many things, including business culture, where you'll, you'll work in a company or for a business and the people who have been there longer or, or who are the superiors will say like, yeah. You know, it is 2020 and we could let you have like an easier time at it. But when I was your age, I had to fucking bust my ass and I want you to bust, you know, like just to validate my ass busting from 30 years ago. I want to see you do it now just to like give me some sort of validation for my thing instead of saying, well, I'll be damned, you know, history and future march on. And now, you know what I mean? Like if you looked at it like the way these people want you to in that, well, I had to do this, you know, like when labor laws first went into place or children, you know, like imagine like 
an 18 year old who just spent the last eight years working, you know, hard labor. And all of a sudden now the next 18 year old or the next 10 year old doesn't have to. And they could have yeah. said, well, that's yeah. not fair. Cause when I was 10, I had to fucking do this. Yeah, this everybody forever in a factory has and almost have died. It sucks. Like, yeah, mine. it's like, it's a spiral. <laughs> it's a spiral downhill into absolute just nonsense to go for that. You know what I mean? So it's just like, you can't, well, and the power, the robber barons love it when we do that kind of shit to ourselves. Right. You know, because it keeps the status quo of them pimping out the fucking economy going. Exactly. You know? I earned my stripes, so <laughs> but, you better earn yours. I mean, I, I'm, I, I, I want to get back to one of your quest to your question, Bjorn, about why don't we just focus on the positive, right, essentially. Like, why don't we focus on the opportunity in the campaign, or et cetera, Um well, maybe not only, but sell it. Well, right. Like, but be able to like be inspired and motivated around the opportunity for some utopian other yeah. society. It's just that. Uh, it's just that it, that's not as motivating as telling you that the thing you already have is in danger, and if you don't yeah. come with yeah. me, you're going to no, lose what you have. Fear. Fear right, is fear and the protection of your own and traditionalism and conservatism and etc. are so innate. Yeah, in in like human society and in tribalism. Primates. Yeah, yeah, and so like I think that emotion is just stronger. The emotion of protecting what you have <clears throat> and being uh, being in, you know intimidated by change is stronger than the emotion that's inspired by thinking about having a better life. What about this, though? If you think about that fear, I agree, like take it, like analogize it to meta, uh, to elements. It's like fire, right? Fear is like a flame and it's easy to ignite and it yep. catches on and it can do all this. But because uh, as you were saying that, I was thinking if you were to say, you know, like, for example, and I'm not someone who does this, but I could try harder if Every time I ran into somebody saying, no, no, you can't do that. There's not enough to go around. That's just naive talk. That's silly. And every time I just said, I disagree. You know, I believe there is enough. And I believe if enough of us believe and and work towards it, we can achieve these things. And if every time I had that conversation with the same person, I consistently did that. And people around that person, kind of like water, right? Like against yes. fire started yeah. doing that same thing. It's right. like, it, it makes it easier for them to go, you know, I didn't agree with you three months ago, right? And the hundredth time you said it, I still thought you were full of shit. But I'm kind of slowly starting to, like it almost allows someone right. to transition <clears throat> rather than to just switch, you know what I'm From saying? From fear to frontier. Right. Well, yeah, it's. I, I think you're right about that. That's kind of the progression of actually creating a change in a, in a viewpoint like that. If you, if you, um, if you if there's been a long building narrative that creates all of these points about why this position is is more correct or more uh, has more opportunities for more people um, and that kind of that narrative and thread keeps building through you and you're an ethically minded person and moral you think about the betterment of everybody but you've been inculcated in a certain manner slowly all those threads of narrative come kind of into your mind to where you actually possess the whole key. You've yeah. been you've been given all the information and then you have one catalytic discussion with Uncle John who has been on this for a hundred years. And you know, he finally realized that Old thing he Uncle said John. that made a fucking lot of sense. Well, and, and it's right. like What's that the one, biggest risk you have? Boom. And you have everything cataloged already, what that all represents. And you can, you know, that's why the lady who said at the at the Bernie rally, you can come over, we're an inclusive group. They know exactly what they're joining to. And they kind of might have a sense that it's pretty good. They right. just have to stick to their stoic stubbornness because the the fear and the hope haven't been sold well enough. And to Meshach's point, yeah, sell I'm ready to for somebody to sell all that good shit. Sell them the fucking fear that they should have for World War Three, for right. their children thinking grab them by the pussy is okay under Trump. For all those things they should be scared as fuck of, especially if they're, you know, of a certain religious stripe or moral stripe. Right. Um, and then sell them the hope of this go a goddamn future where 
people have brand new fucking new textbooks like every other year, <laughs> you know, right. or brand new computers for fucking every single kid in every single school, you know, like re- well-paid teachers. Like, let's talk about that world, man. That shit causes reverberations just by changing a few fundamental things to education and healthcare. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I agree. And I think uh, it's really hard to practice it, but I think that'll be what it does end up taking is just the willingness to have the same conversation multiple times to humbly say to the dude in the chair, the shoulder scraper. Cause What's happening? What did I just, I, did I just hear a spaceship descending? It was in my house. Podcast? It was in my I'm house. I'm hearing it over the speakers. But I it's think it's uh, one of my neighbors has a loud vehicle. Oh, damn. damn. Uh, Is that the base? Your just neighbor kidding. has a When piece. I'm saying really right stuff, um, it just, it you resonates know, in the universe. Damn. Yeah. No, but like, like, let's say Bjorn met with that dude on the bar stool, had the same conversation for three months, like like every other weekend or something like mm-hmm. that. Yeah. You know, like, because this time he probably isn't convinced. He might have nah. he might have nudged or budged a little <laughs> bit, you know what I mean? But, but if every time you were just like, yeah, I hear you, I hear what your concerns are, I understand how much you value your fourth house and that you'd like to have it and stuff. But here's you know how i see it you know you don't have to agree with me we can agree to disagree but this is where i see it like because i feel like the only argument against is you're naive you don't understand the real world that's the only real thing someone can say to you and the only thing you can really say back is i disagree right like like i'm sorry you feel that way here's how i feel i wish you saw it differently you know what I mean? But but whatever, we can still have this cordial conversation. You know, it's like it's not my default in any sense of the way of looking at things. But like if I could do that more, you know what I mean? I just feel like maybe eventually because because I just look at even this Bernie thing, like what I'd said earlier, like I saw uh, Warren as the more likely, you know, like I was kind of like I mean, I've liked Bernie's for for. 20 years or 18 years since I first heard him on fucking Air America on Tom Hartman's yeah. show and yeah. shit. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I've heard him forever. Yeah. Um, and I've loved what he had to say forever. But I still wasn't jump out first wave Bernie supporter in 2020. You know what I mean? And I, I kind of liked Warren. And I still do like Warren. But at this point, I'm pro Bernie because kind of like in that same way... I've seen, hey, there are a lot of people around who are ready to believe in this thing. Yeah. I wanted to believe in it, and I had reasons to go, ah, you know, maybe not. It might not be possible. Why should I hold out? Like, what, what, you know, like, from my point of view, I had to think to myself. there now. Yeah, Yeah. why why should I keep saying, well, yeah, someone else, you know, because of his supporters? Well, you know, that does... Whatever supporter issue people have with him, that wasn't at play when I first heard him talking in 2003. That wasn't, yeah, yeah. that's not who he is, you know? So well, I guess I feel like I'm even the example of that. This. Like, I, I feel like it's hard for yeah. any American to vote for somebody who know, who they know can't win. Um, and to a degree, I think that is called a protest vote because we know inherently as a, just as a human and as an American you're kind of opting out of the process to vote for somebody that you know is unelectable. And I feel like there's, because of that, there's this like push and pull for all of us at this stage to pick a candidate who we both like and we can feel good about supporting and that we think enough of the critical mass of other people are also going to feel the same way about that we won't be alone. And like there's this kind of natural instinct, like uh, uh, The Daily had a great podcast the other day where the entire episode was just talking about how um, New York Times reporters have been, in, you know, re, um, interviewing people around the country, and the conversation has shifted over the course of the Democratic debates into almost being exclusively about electability. That if you just gro- grab a, a group of Democrats and ask them about the the candidates and et cetera, you'll hear almost nothing about what those people think of those candidates they'll all talk about whether or not they can beat Trump. Yeah. <clears throat> um, and the whole focus becomes electability. Um, whereas while when we talk about, and like what you just said, Rob resonated with me because 
that's kind of how I felt about Bernie. The first, like, it wasn't 18 years ago, but like yeah. when I heard him talk, I was like, oh yeah, cool, totally, I'm in. Yeah, sounds good. Like, yeah, good. No hang, no red flags whatsoever, and usually it's just fucking red flags flying. Yeah, right, <laughs> you know, right. like so. Yeah, cool. This is yeah, this guy's exactly. great. Yeah, um, exactly. So like, but then when you think, start thinking, and I don't, I still don't see the unelectability of Bernie, except for the forces of the DNC and the RNC as corporate entities. But as far as people go, Bernie is a hundred percent electable and could run this country. There's no question in my mind. Um, however, it does seem like beating Trump is now the criteria for how people are thinking about who to vote for. Yeah. But and I, best person beat Trump. You know, and, and, and I, I don't know if the answer is yes to any of these people. Well, nobody, nobody knows anything for sure, but it seems that in like national <laughs> polling, Bernie consistently beats Trump like right. as well or more so than anyone else also. And it's like for some reason he never gets credit for some of this stuff. You know what I mean? People like Chuck Todd, who I fucking can't stand, um, was saying some shit like, Well, I don't know why this guy's considered a front runner. It, like he said two, that on like Meet the two Press. First something. surfer names in a row. Right. Chuck, Chuck and uh, Todd. Like but, that's a that's a hand holding surfer duo that like goes up and down the Pacific coast. Just, no, you know. they clearly they the establishment clearly still has a lot of fear of Bernie, and that's the big hurdle to get over. The movement is ready to fucking get unleashed, but right. the establishment is still so skittery about putting him in charge. Well, and one thing that's for sure is somehow this like uh, supporters, Bernie Bros, whatever thing is a bridge to to cross because people continue to cite that i talk to people you know who are progressives who are like yeah i like him but you know his supporters are kind of assholes like it's not it's not just like a meme it's like something that people actually think so i'm just trying to figure out like as we're talking about this like what do you how do you overcome that like you could you could try to encourage people who do support him to be more friendly but there maybe there's something um that goes a little bit further than that maybe not maybe it's just you know people got to just see that the people supporting him that you know actually aren't jerks maybe the guy on twitter I that mean, you think is a bernie supporter is it's like, a good thing there are no assholes supporting donald trump Thank, uh, well yeah thankfully there are zero assholes. well That's in, fair, I, in yeah, fairness I, I think these are the type of people who are saying like you know elizabeth warren's supporters aren't yeah no assholes in that camp either I don't know about the no assholes, but I think they're trying to say the concentration. And I'm not agreeing with them necessarily, but they genuinely believe. They right. really, really believe that there's more jerks supporting Bernie. Um, and it might be true, because as much as we've been talking about this stuff, when I hear people defend Trump policies or whatever else, it makes me be like fuck you you know what yeah. i mean like like when you're saying like it's okay yeah. to put kids in cages or whatever else i'm like you're a bad person fuck no I, you yes I, so yeah. that turns me into right there's a in that moment response. yeah yeah right. an asshole and and it's hard for me to understand how i'm anyone is expected to be like well, that's your opinion. You know, the kids could be in cages. I prefer them not. You know, like that doesn't feel like the appropriate right. uh, way to deal with it. But yet, I think that as much as I hate fucking Trump and Donald Trump Jr. and all that, that like triggering terms, like it is yeah. a trigger to it a is. lot of yeah. compassionate people to right. hear someone justify or make excuses for brutal, evil actions. You know what I mean? But it doesn't necessarily win anyone over, you know? And in fact, it perpetuates this perspective that, oh, well, you know, these guys are kind of feisty or whatever. I don't know, you know? It's just... Yeah, yeah. I mean, but we're all triggered, though. Like, uh, you know, abortion is a trigger topic for half the country, and there's, a you know, a thousand trigger topics for, you know, both sides and et cetera. Like, we're... But that's the campaign. That's the process is pressing all those buttons and flipping yeah. all the switches and triggering all the triggers so that people will subdivide and tell us what you think. It's like everybody just get in a camp so we can count you. Yeah. It's the process. Here. What's your biggest? What's your what biggest? do we have to do to scatter you motherfuckers to pick a side? 
Yeah. yeah. No, it's true. Well, I think we uh, we've really hello we've covered some significant ground here. There's yeah, no I think that. we have too. Yeah, I'd say this about, is a... about one topic. We covered a lot of ground. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yes. I, can I can I present a topic for next week? Yeah. Sure, go ahead. But I have already got a list that we didn't get to this week. So uh, yesterday and I so called my mom. Yesterday I called my mom to ask what she was doing last night, and I haven't called her since this conversation. But she said she was going to the church where my mom and my dad are pastors to have a U.S. marshal train her and a couple hundred other um, church members in self-defense in case of a mass shooting. Um, and that includes all of the concealed carry um, members of the church getting shooting training at the church in the situation of a mass shooting. We could talk about this next week because I haven't had a chance to talk to her about it. But I, I thought it was interesting. That is interesting. And I got to just drop this quick little anecdote, yeah. if I may. I was going to Peru two weeks ago or a week ago or something, flying through Dallas. I get on an airplane, Dallas to Lima. And uh, the guy sitting next to me has a suit on and the uh, badge. Uh, oh, nice. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, the, well, he's an yes, elder. Elder. Yes. Yeah, elder, something, something, something. Uh, and he, re, you know, he leans over. He has a knee brace, first of all, over his suit pants. Suit. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and, and he leans over to me and he says, uh, can, can I ask you a favor, man to man? Um, I'm a missionary with the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints and... I'm going home to my family and as a missionary, I'm not allowed to have like Facebook or messenger on my phone. Can I log into my Facebook on your phone and write a message to my father saying I'm coming home or something? Hmm. And I was like, uh, what, what do you want to do? Like, uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, like, uh, uh, fuck. like, first of all, I don't want to get scammed. Second of all, I don't want to try to be converted, you know, whatever. Anyway, the reason of the story isn't really that. Uh, but in talking to him, the reason he had the knee brace was he was also a member of the Peruvian Special Forces. He like used to be on like heroin or something as a preteen and found both the Mormon God and the military. Uh, but check this shit out. The reason he had an injured knee, just when you said the shooting thing, it, yeah, yeah. it came to my mind. Uh, as part of the training for the Special Forces, they have the newest recruits. They they take like more experienced recruits, and you got to stand back here while the newer recruits shoot at targets to the left and right of you. No, uh, no. And one of them just shot the motherfucker in the knee. <laughs> so he like you know they're they're telling him like his superiors are like oh go over God. here. The new the new blood is gonna... so valuable to us now that you've completed your training. We'll think go about the like in front of these people who have not completed their training who are right. firing at you. But psychologically, like, being in the line of fire like that, right, probably has some sort of twisted benefit. But just the idea that he goes out there, faith in the Mormon God, faith in the Peruvian military, faith in the system. He's probably holding his breath, closing his eyes, and bam, fucking hitting the knee. You know what I mean? So, like, five years later, he's out here wearing a knee brace. In the leg. Yeah. It's not ah, funny. I feel bad. No, he he seemed like a nice guy, but I'm just saying, yeah. like, it's not funny, ironic, but it is uh, ironic. Yes. <laughs> and, and I just thought it was a little like, you know, it could be worse. We could all be getting shot by fucking new recruits. Right. Uh, exactly. Just some geez. friendly fire. In order to like further our cause. So you know. <laughs> I wonder how many people have actually been killed in that practice, and they still haven't changed. He said that it was a 22 bullet, so it wasn't okay. like super. Yeah. He was like, you know, yeah, it sucked, but. It wasn't like the worst. The way it is, man. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's how they they do it down there. You know what I mean? Yeah, I the first, uh, I I shot a twenty-two bullet at um through a vice grip on a table one time with a an ice pick and a hammer. I was like eleven years old, and I found a a full twenty-two bullet, and I was like how does this work? And I picked it up and I was like looking through it and it has a little point on yeah, the back yeah. of, like a little dot. And I was like, yeah. I that's the button. I bet you have to press that button really hard. So I pulled yeah. it up and I put it in a vice. My dad had Jesus. this like, table in the garage and I put it on a, in the vice grip and I clamped it down so I could see the bullet. And I had no idea what I was aiming at. I didn't care. I just wanted to see if the thing went off. So I took an ice pick 
yeah. a hammer, yeah, yeah. and I hit the bullet in the on the yeah. button, yeah. and that bitch fired through the wall. <laughs> yeah, I practically shit myself. I was yeah. so fucking scared. It was so loud, freaked me out. My dad came, like, it was a whole big deal. I, I shit, yeah, I can I understand shit. why. Yeah, we'll still fuck you up if it's close enough. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'd be impressed. Yeah, I'd be impressed and then really make sure I hit all my ammo if my child is. <laughs> right. <laughs> wow. You're dead. Uh, that's great. Uh, all right, you guys. I got to cut. Yeah. All the best. This too. great convy. I'm glad we were able to do this again. Let's get on a regularity. Yeah. yeah. Irregularity. Regularity. Immobilarity. <laughs> yes. That too. Modularity? Ooh. That's the one. Ooh. 2020. Ooh. Episode volume 27, episode one. Yep. All right. Take care, you guys. Peace.